I want to get into our message this morning, and um, the title of the message is A Mother Who Acted in Faith. Um, and I would like just to um, uh, look at, uh, it's going to be, scripture passage is going to be found in um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, and then um, Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, and then Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. So I would like um, for us to, um, and we're going to be looking at three specific points here. Um, in faith, she saw and acted, and God responds to faith. Um, and so if you would, if you would read along with me uh, as we get into this passage, uh, then we will, um, then we'll get into our, then we'll get into our message. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse, verse 23. And by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because they saw he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 2, and then we were looking at verses 1 through 10. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a daughter of Levi. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a wicker basket and covered it with tar and pitch. Then she put the child into it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. Her sister stood at a distance to find out what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to the bathe at the Nile with her maidens walking alongside the Nile, and she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid, and she brought it to her. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the boy was crying. She, and she had pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and make a, a nurse for you, call a nurse for you from a Hebrew woman, that she may nurse this child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go ahead. So the girl went and called the child's mother. The fat, then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse her for me, and I will give you the wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. The child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and, became, and he became her son. And she named him Moses and said, because I drew him out of the water. And may God add the blessing uh, to the reading uh, of his word. And so our points are in faith, she saw and acted, and God responds to faith. Again, there's been so much difficulties and trials been going on in our society and our world today. Um, and sometimes it seems like it, it's overwhelming and we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Um, so often there are, you read the news, um, our leaders and those in charge and those experts, um, so-called experts are not even sure themselves what tomorrow, so to speak, or the next day or the next month or the next year will bring. None of them know um, exactly what will happen. It's all supposition. They don't not sure. They, they go by charts and they go by graphs and they go by data. But yet none of them are accurate as far as what's going on. And, and that doesn't. And so for us, not having accurate data or not having accurate predictions of what exactly is going to happen can, I think, for some of us, can be a little disconcerting. But when someone see, knows and understands the times and the difficulties and someone understands uh, the circumstances uh, that they're in and then they act, even though they don't, they, this, the future is uncertain, even though the future uh, and what's going to happen is uncertain, they act according to what they know from God can make a big difference. And so um, this morning, we see a woman, a mother, 
who was in certain uh, difficult circumstances, Moses' mother and her daughter, Miriam. And so they were there and they saw, they understood the circumstances, they understood the times, and they understood the difficulty. And so they took action based on what they saw, not knowing what tomorrow would bring. And as a result of that, as we're going to see, um, there was a great deliverance that happened on that day because they, even though they didn't see what happened, they saw they were able to be a part of a great deliverance that God had planned because they acted in faith. So let's look at the, uh, the scripture passage today. Um, let's see um, what happened. Um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents. Because they saw he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's eating. So there's an important point here is that um, if you look at the book of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews is a great book. Um, but this And this chapter is an exceptional book. Well, the whole Bible is exceptional, but this chapter stands out as the heroes of faith. And look who's listed among the heroes of faith in this chapter, in verse 23. Moses' parents, which included his mom. And it says here, um, there, there was an edict out at this time that Moses, that the Pharaoh wanted all the uh, young male um, uh, killed that under they were under um, I think under two years old and um, and he wanted them killed and taken out because he felt threatened uh, because the Hebrews were uh, giving birth and they were um, multiplying quickly and he was afraid that the Hebrews would eventually take over so if he took out the males and he would be um, then, you know, then he would be safe and, the, and they wouldn't be able to have, there wouldn't be a threat, so to speak, to his, um, to his uh, throne. So we see here that um, the, the, if you look at Hebrews chapter 20, uh, Hebrews eleven twenty three, 23, it says that they weren't, they were hidden for three months by, in other words, this child, because the king had this edict out, this law out, they, he was hidden for three months by his parents because his parents um, were, were going to hide. They, they, they hid this child, Moses, for three months because they saw he was a beautiful child. Now, this idea here was they saw that he was a beautiful child. In other words, not only was he physically a beautiful child um, and uh, a handsome child, but but he was beautiful in the eyes of God. In other words, they could see in Moses, they could see in Moses what God saw in Moses. In other words, they saw with God's eyes what they were seeing, what, what God saw in Moses, and that he was a beautiful child. In other words, God saw him with beauty. God saw him with uh, grace. God saw him with uh, poten potential um, uh in God's purpose and God's work in him. So God had a plan here and they saw, they were able to see with God's eyes. Um, and as we talk about faith, um, Moses's mom and, and her dad were able to see with God's eyes uh, in Moses, what, um, what, what God, what God's purpose was for Moses. They saw him, that he was a beautiful child, that God had a purpose and a plan for, and they were going to do what they can do in order to protect this child from the law, from the Pharaoh who was meant to kill him and meant to kill and, and take away uh, their son. Um, but they understood and they feared God more than they feared the edict of the law of Pharaoh, who was king over all of um, Egypt at that time. And they were not afraid, if you look at this, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. So we see here that they weren't afraid of the king. They saw, there's a couple points here. They saw with God, they saw with God's eyes what God saw in Moses. And based on that, they acted in faith. 
and they hid the child, regardless of what the law was, regardless of what the king wanted to do, regardless um, what the king, uh, the, whatever he had intentions of doing, they weren't going to be afraid of the king because they feared God more than they feared the man. They feared God because they saw, and, they, and, 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 they, and because what they saw, what God saw, they were able to act in faith and do what God had commanded them to do, um, to hide this child and protect this child, even though they didn't know what tomorrow would bring, God was telling them, this is a beautiful child. I look at him with beauty. I look at him with grace. And I see in him what I want to do. And so we're going to protect him and we're going to take care of him. And that's faith. Because faith will say, um, even though I don't see what's coming tomorrow, even though I may not know what's tomorrow, even though I may not understand what's tomorrow, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid of what uh, what whatever law is out there that the king is doing to try and take my child or do whatever circumstances out there that's contrary to what everything that what God says. And I'm going to, I'm going to do it regardless of what they say. I'm going to trust you, God, even though I maybe not don't understand what tomorrow is, but I'm going to act in faith and do it. And that's what, um, that's what Moses's mom did. His parents did at this time. And so, and, and, and what's really cool about this, is that as a result of this, they're, again, noted among the heroes of faith in the book of Hebrews. Because they acted in faith, they are noted among the heroes of faith. And you know what? And, that, and what that's saying is, that's saying that God noticed them. God is aware of them, and God commends them for their faith because they're written in the, they're written in, they're written in his hero, hero, so to speak. So her Moses' mom was a hero in God's eyes. His parents were heroes in God's eyes because they acted in faith. And God loves those who act in faith, they, who trust him and believe him for great and mighty things, even in the midst of difficult circumstances, even in the midst of circumstances and situations that they may, they may not understand. They act in faith and they trust him and they believe him. And as a result, God commends them for that. And that's such a blessing to be commended by God. Isn't that a wonderful blessing to be commended by God and because you did and you acted in faith and believed him for what he said he was going to do? What a wonderful blessing that is. And that's what God wants for us. That's what God desires for us, that we act in faith and we believe him and we trust him that what we're doing is, is that we're acting in faith and we're believing you. And when we act in faith and we believe him, what happens? He commends us. So um, but let's go on here. So they were commended by God because they acted in faith, even though they couldn't see what happened. But now you see in her second point is that she saw and acted. Okay, verses 1, Exodus 2. Let's go Exodus 2, verses 1 through 4. Exodus 2, verses 1 through 4. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a daughter of of Levi. So those are Moses' parents. Okay? And so this is what, what uh, Hebrews uh, 11.23 explains. This is Moses' parents. The woman conceived and bore a son. And who is his son? Moses. And when she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. In other words, again, she saw, as we looked at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, he saw, she saw that um, she saw that he was beautiful. In other words, again, she was doing what? She was seeing him with God's eyes. She's seeing the beauty in him, the 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 person that uh, the person of who he is. And God looks at him not just with the physical beauty, but as he is as a person, um, the beauty of this child, and and being able to see God's potential and God's purpose and God's plan. For him, even though they don't understand it, they could see it because they were watching and looking at this child with God's eyes, and they were saying he's beautiful, and therefore, because he's beautiful and God sees him as beautiful, they hit him for three months. Okay, so um, so Moses' mother, his parents, but here in this case, it, it talks about Moses' mother. What did, what, what did they do? They hid him for three months. 
even though there was a law, as we saw in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, that they were going to take the lives of any uh, Hebrew ch uh, male children, um, that they were going to, so they hid this, they hid them based on faith in God. And so faith, even though we can't see, faith is the evidence of things hoped for, uh, the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we see here that, that when we're called, when we see circumstances that we don't understand, we don't, and, we, and we're called in situations that we don't know about, and we don't know the future, and sometimes the future is uncertain, and the things that are out there are uncertain, and it can be a little disconcerting, and it can, a little be, um, it can fill us sometimes with anxiety. Um, and fear and doubt. We have to begin to look at circumstances and situations with God's eyes. I talked a little bit about that last week. We can't look at the circumstances of our life today and what's going on around us today. There's a lot of stuff going on today. There's a lot of things that would cause us, again, to be afraid or to be fearful or to worry or to doubt or to uh, have anxiety. But that's what we see with our eyes. We have to learn to be able to see with God's eyes because that's what faith does. Faith begins to see with God's eyes. Moses' parents saw what? With God's eyes. And so, therefore, because they saw with God's eyes, what did they do? They acted. And so they saw with God's eyes, and then they saw in faith, and they acted. Faith requires what? Action. Faith requires action, doesn't it? For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we have to act upon what we know and what God shows us. Because if we don't, then it's empty. If you look in James, it talks about faith. And it talks about uh, faith without works is dead. If you look in the book of James, it says faith without works is dead. So the reality is, is that Moses' mother and his parents acted on faith. Even though they couldn't see, they, even though they couldn't know, they didn't foresee what was going to happen, they acted on faith and did what they felt was the appropriate thing to do based on what God showed them in their lives. So they, And so their action was that they hid this child. Now, it's really important that when we act on faith, we follow what we believe to, know, to be God's plan. Um, even though it may be difficult, even though it may be terrifying, even though it may be challenging, we need to know that what we're doing is because God is calling us to do it. And we act and we say, okay, God, I don't understand this. I, I can't see what's going to go, go on. I don't know the ultimate end. But what I'm doing is I'm doing what you're telling me to do now. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to act upon it now. And I'm going to follow your instructions, even though I don't understand, even though I can't see down the road, so to speak. I'm going to act in faith. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you that what I'm doing, you're going to take care of this, even though I can't see. But let's go on here. But when they could hide him no longer, so circumstances changed. They did what they could at the time. They hid him for three months. But then this, even though they could, and it came to a point where they couldn't hide him any longer. So more faith was required. More faith was um, asked upon them, uh, was asked of them. And so they had to figure things out. And so the next step was, okay, so now what do we do? It's getting to the point where we can't hide this child any longer. We can't hide this little baby any longer. We can't do it. So now what do we do? So faith takes uh, requires a second step, doesn't it, sometimes? And so they took the first step, 
they took the first action and now they're going to take the second action of what they needed to do. And that was, it may seem a little unorthodox, but they're going to put them in the Nile. I'm going to put this little child in the Nile. They put it, they got him a wicker basket, a little, little basket. I was looking as I was studying this, it, it, this same thing. It's funny how um, is that the same word that they use for the ark. It's, it's only here, it's in these two instances, but it's like a little mini ark. Um, and the wicker basket was, so to speak, was like a little miniature um, ark, so to speak. And the whole purpose of this, as we're going to find out, is that God was preparing what? Deliverance for his people. And what was God, and what were they doing uh, within the time of Noah with the ark? God was delivering his what? His people from the flood. What was God doing now? God was raising up an a individual who would what? Deliver his people from, from where? From their oppressors, wasn't he? So they put him in his wicker basket, so to speak, and for the child who would one day, as we, we will see, would be Israel's deliverer uh, from the bondages of their oppressors. And so we see here that he was put in the wicker basket and covered it over with tar and pitch. Sound familiar? Like with the ark? And then she put the child into it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. So the reeds, so there's reeds in the Nile. The Nile's a really big river. Uh, but she put it, this child in a little basket, a child, a young child. Uh, we don't, not sure exactly how old he is. We know at least he's at least three months old. We're not sure exactly how old he is at this point. But still, he's a young baby child. And so they put him in the river among the reeds. Um, and uh, the river is a, the Nile River is a big river. It's like a major river in Egypt, in northern northern Africa. And so putting your child in there, and the mom was saying, you know, this is what I feel I, I need to do at this point. I can't hide him anymore. This is my next step. This is what we need to do to put the child in the basket. Now, what are in what are in rivers, especially? Um, down in that region, in that area, alligators, crocodiles, aren't there? You don't know what's in those rivers. Uh, crocodiles love little things they can eat. But, you know, the mom was doing what she felt that she had to do in order to protect her child. Even though there may have been dangers in the river, even though there may be dangers, uh, unknown dangers, she was going to act in faith and do what she felt that she needed to do. In other words, the danger of putting him in the Nile, um, in her mind, um, the, the danger of him being lost to Pharaoh outweighed the danger of him putting in the Nile. So that's what she did. And so we see this was an act of faith. In other words, again, she acted in faith. She believed that somehow, some way, that God would protect Moses, this child. His name wasn't Moses at the time, but because um, he doesn't, it doesn't have a name. He doesn't. The child doesn't have a name before this, before this moment here, when she put him in the basket and put him in the in the river, in the Nile River. But she again, she acted in faith. So we see here that when. At circumstances, it requires a step of faith. But number two is that sometimes faith will require things that maybe that we're not so comfortable with, that we're maybe not so, you know, like putting a child in the river and there's animals in the river and there could be snakes in the river, whatever, or crocodiles or whatever in the river. And so she's going to... Uh, do it even though she may not be completely comfortable with it, but because she believes that this is what God wants, she's going to do it. And sometimes faith requires from us um, as uh, God's people that we're going to, that we walk in faith, that we require things that we may not be so comfortable with 
uh, that we may have a little fear with, but that we need to go ahead and do it because we believe that God's going to take care of whatever we're going to, whatever fears that we have. God's going to take care of whatever dangers we, we think is, are going to happen, whatever circumstances are going to happen. We believe deep down inside that God's going to take care of it. And that's what faith does. Faith, even though there may we think there may be some dangers, even though we may think that there's some difficulties, even though there may be some things that are going on, we believe somehow, some way, not somehow, some way, but we believe deep down in our heart that God will take care of the situation. Even in the midst of the perceived danger or the perceived um, difficulties in that circumstances, faith says, okay, I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to do what you tell me to do, even though there may be these things going on here, but I'm going to trust you because I know you're going to take care of the situation. Does that make sense? Um, let's go on here. Um, and it says, because Moses' mother acted in faith, um, she did what she was supposed to do. So, um, and listen to this. Um, in verse in verse four, her, his sister, Moses' sister, Miriam, stood at a distance to find out what would happen to him. So who was watching this the whole time? Who was watching this whole circumstance the whole time? Miriam. Whose sister was that? Moses' sister, his older sister obviously. And she she was watching what her parents were doing. She was watching what her mother, her mother of faith, was doing. And we need to be very careful. I'm, I'm speaking to the choir here myself as well. Um, when we know and we and God's calling us to act in faith and believe him and to trust him and to look to him, there are others watching what we're going to do, how we're going to respond, who we're going to look like at this. And who was looking at who was looking at um, Moses at this time? Who was looking at what mom and dad were doing, what mom his mom was doing right here in this situation? Miriam was. That was her daughter. And so she was watching mom and her parents acting in faith, wasn't she? She was looking at mom and looking at dad and looking at the circumstance and situation, which seemed kind of ortho unorthodox, but she was seeing her parents act in faith. And so when we act in faith, others watch, and then what happens? Others, like our children or whomever, see us act in faith, and then they're able to, uh, when they act in faith, when, when we act in faith, then the others see it, and then they're emboldened to act in faith as well. Look at that legacy that left behind for Miriam, that she saw her parents do it, she saw her mom do it, and now she's going to do it as we look into our next part. She was watching her parents act in faith. Now she's going to be a part of what God was going to do as well because her parents acted in faith. Miriam was watching, stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. God responds to faith. Because Moses acted in faith, her daughter got to share in God's plan. Look at this. Sometimes this might be overlooked sometimes, but Moses, because Moses' mom acted in faith, Verses, this is verse, we're going to be looking at verses 5 through 10 now. Because Moses' mother acted in faith in this particular circumstance and in the situation where they hid the child uh, for three months, because they acted in faith, her daughter Miriam got to share in God's plan. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That when we act in faith, others get to share in what God is doing. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a great thing? You think about that. When we do faith, it's just not about us. And so often we think about it, faith, it's just about me. But there's, when we act in faith and we do what's in faith, what happens is that we allow others to join in to what God is doing. When we, and, and, and conversely, it's true as well 
is that when we don't act in faith, others don't get to participate in what God wants to do and what God is doing and the wonderful plans that God has. God has wonderful, wonderful, wonderful plans. God has exciting plans, great things that he wants to do, that he wants to accomplish. But he wants to use us as we walk in faith. But he also, as we walk in faith, he wants us to be an example for others so that they can share and and, and what God is doing as well. Because um, it's so important is that, again, it's that's not about us. It's about involving others around us so that they can share and they can participate in the plan and the purpose of what God is doing. So this is what happened with uh, Miriam. And so, so we see here that the next few verses are going to focus on who? On Miriam. Not, um, and let's hear, the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the Nile, and her maidens walking alongside the Nile, and she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid, and she brought it to her. So God's hand was in it, wasn't he? God's hand was in this all along, because this was the plan that God had. So as a result of this, because Moses' mom acted in faith, she was a woman of faith, put him in the reeds, and then God providentially, at that right time, and that right moment, had Pharaoh's daughter come down to take her, ba to bathe, to take her bath, and... As a result, he sees his basket. God had it all planned out. God had it all worked out. But faith sees what only God can see. And so this was God's plan. This was God's plan, that this child would be delivered. And, and when we act in faith, God's plan is able to be worked out the way he designed it to be. But he wants to use us as a result of that. And so here, um, she, saw the she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maids, and she brought it to her. So here was the beginning of God's deliverance, but it was because Moses' mom acted in faith, and then as a result was what happened is, is that God used even Pharaoh's daughter to be a part of what he was planning to do for the deliverance of his people. But Moses' mom had to put him in the basket. And then Miriam was watching, and then here, watch this. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the boy was crying. I'm sure the baby was. I'm sure he was afraid. I'm sure he was uh, fearful of uh, being in this river, floating in this river. Um, and he's a young baby, and as a result, she had pity on him. In other words, she felt sorry for him. She felt uh, sadness for him because his baby was crying. She probably felt that he was afraid, and she could see that he was afraid, and that um, so she felt pity on him. And this is one of the Hebrew children. Now remember, Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter knew about the edict that her father, who was Pharaoh put out that he wanted all the Hebrew males under a certain age to be killed. She knew about that. But she had pity on the child. And again, this was all from God. This was all from his part of his plan for the deliverance of his people. This is one of the Hebrew children. So she knew of the Hebrew children. Tell, of course, that, you know, from uh, certain physical characteristics that this was a, a Hebrew child. Uh, and the, the characters were different from those from the Egyptians um, in, in certain respects. Then his sister. So God was even using Pharaoh's daughter. Even in spite of what her dad was doing, God was using her. And then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew woman that she may nurse a child for you? So we see here that Miriam saw the opportunity, of what, which was put in motion 
by her parents, by her mom. And so she was going to follow because she saw her mom stay. Now she was going to follow and do what she was called to do um, and act in faith herself. So she saw her mom act in faith. Now Miriam is going to do what? She's going to act in faith as well. And she saw the opportunity of what was going to happen and she acted upon it. Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the, the Hebrew woman that she may nurse a child for you? So that was her part. Even though she was a child herself, we're not sure how old she is um, at this particular moment, but she acted in faith and she said, shall I do this? In other words, she did what she could do. And that's so important is that when we act in faith, others see it, and then they can do what we can't do. Moses' mom wouldn't have been able to do that. But Miriam could. And Miriam went and asked, the, um, and asked um, the mother and, and asked the daughter of Pharaoh, you know, um, can I get someone to nurse a child? Because they needed someone. They didn't have formula back then. They didn't have uh, that type of thing. So they needed someone to nurse the child. And who better than um, to nurse the child than um, someone from his own people? And who better than his own mom? This is so interesting. This is so really cool. Pharaoh's daughter said, her, said to her, verse 8, go ahead. So the girl went and called the child's mother. That is so wonderful because you see that when we act in faith, God is able to do things that we couldn't even imagine. Here was not because Moses' mother acted in faith by putting him in the basket and putting him on the reeds, and Pharaoh's daughter picks him up. Now, and she didn't know what's going to happen to this child, but she did that in faith uh, so that the child could be delivered and the child could be protected, believing in faith that somehow that God was going to work this out and that God was going to do something that she couldn't do. But she acted in faith and did it. And as a result of what happened, her daughter, her daughter, Miriam, got to be a part of what God was doing, and she acted in faith. And now she was going to do what? She was um, going to be able to nurse her own child and be uh, and 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 pour into her own child. See what happened there? Is that because she acted in faith, God did the supernatural and did what uh, natural circumstances couldn't do. Now, who could have predicted that? Who would have been able to um, see that that was going to happen? No one. But that's what faith does. Faith opens up doors and opens up windows of opportunity so that um, the impossible can happen. And so here the mom of Moses was able to, she was able to nurse her own child and still and her child would be protected because the um, because she was uh, nursing him for Pharaoh's daughter. So you see how God does stuff. You see when we act in faith, he takes care of circumstances and situations and then he turns them into our advantage. And that he and that um, and you see the favor comes. The favor came where she saw um, Moses uh, uh, Pharaoh's daughter so pity on him, child. She told Miriam to uh, go and find a nurse, and Miriam found the nurse, and it was her mom. Miriam went and 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 the mom was able to nurse her own child and raise him. And he, and think about this. As go, as godly mothers do, as godly mothers, they pour into their children, don't they? They speak to their children. They speak life to their children. They speak hope to their children. They speak. Uh, reassurance to their children. They speak faith to their children, and they speak life to the child. And even though the child may not understand those words of life and those words of nourishment, and those words of of, of um, faith and those words of peace and love and whatever um, those things, as they speak to the child and she's nursing this child and she's raising this child um, and nursing this child, 
She's speaking life, and this is being poured into Moses' spirit as a baby, as a child. And that's a wonderful thing, and that's what moms do, and that's what that's what um, Moses' mother was doing here. She was pouring into her child, and so faith gives us gives us favor, and as a part of that favor, it gives us opportunity to even act even more in faith, because I'm sure that's what Moses' mother did, because she was a woman of faith, and she believed God, and she was a godly woman, and she would speak life, and speak hope, and speak reassurance um, to this child. Not knowing what was going to happen, but taking the moment, taking the opportunity to be able to use that, to be able to bring life for Moses and for her people. And I th it's getting back to... Uh, and God, I think, wants to bring this out, is, is that I talked about in the beginning that when we act in faith, we're, when we see with God's eyes and we act uh, in doing what God tells us to do, um, that we're participating in God's plan and God's plan is, uh, part, is going to be for us and for those who watch us. To be able to participate in but god's plan often is a plan um in this particular case and, and for us is a plan of deliverance where god's plan was he knew about his people he knew about the cry that was in them he knew about their situation and he's planning on delivering them and so as a result god um was a uh, plan was not only just for the immediate moment but for the long term, the deliverance that Moses would be raised up and that he would deliver his people 80 years later. 80 years later, that he would lead his people out of Egypt and into the promised land. And well, he wouldn't go into the promised land, but he would, he would, his mentor, Joshua, would lead the people into the promised land. So the reality is, is that. God's deliverance um, can be had through us when we act in faith. Because ultimately, who came from Moses? Jesus did, didn't he? And then his deliverance meant deliverance for what? Us. So we see those little acts of faith. We don't think very much. We think well, for the moment. But some of those acts of faith will have um, long-term effects that will go not only in the moment, but will go from this generation to the next generation and throughout all eternity. And we don't realize the ramifications of our decisions and our choices that we make now that will have an effect and will have an uh, upon all of eternity, folks. And we think, well, what a little about me? And what about, I'm nobody. But the reality is we don't know what God's doing in us. We don't know what God has for us. We don't know what God wants to do through us. And we don't know the ramifications of the decisions and the choices that we make now. So we need to be able to say, okay, God, I trust you. I don't understand all this, and I want to be used by you. And then he uses us in the moment, but then that effects of that decision and that choice are going to be for what? All eternity, right? And that's what we need to look at. We need to look at the eternal view because faith has the eternal in mind. And that's what Moses is, was doing here, is that this child, the mom was speaking, Moses' mom was, God was giving her the opportunity to speak life into this child, to speak hope in this child. Um, and so they would prepare him so that when he would raise up 80 years later, that he would be the man that God could use in order to deliver his people uh, from the hand of Pharaoh and lead them through the desert. Let's go on here. Let's finish up here. Then Pharaoh's daughter said, take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. Not only did she nurse him, but she got paid for nursing her own child. How about that? How about that? Not only did she have the privilege of nursing her own child and taking care of her own child, and her child was going to be protected, but she got paid for it. Isn't that cool? The way God takes care of us in those situations, this is all because they acted in faith. It's all because they acted in faith. 
Moses' parents and Moses' mom were people of faith. And God's blessing them and rewarding them with what? The favor of caring for a child, but getting paid for at the same time. And listen to this. Verse 10. The child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter to become her son. And she named him Moses and said, because they drew him out of the water. So that it's the Hebrew word for it's uh, it, it draw it means to draw out. And so he was drawn out of the water. In other words, he was he was saved. He was brought out of the water. And his deliverance, and he was he was saved, and then he was the one that would be the deliverer. And so, folks, um, remember that as we look in, at things in faith, God commends us, as it says in Hebrews 23. We're listed among the heroes. We can be listed among the heroes of faith when we act in faith. But faith requires action. Faith requires action. Faith requires us to take those steps, even though we don't understand, even though we don't know what's going to happen. Because we're we're thinking and we're looking with God's eyes. And we're going to do what we believe that God's telling us to do. And when we act in faith, others are watching, and then it causes them to have faith, and it causes them to act as well and participate in God's plan. And then lastly, a favor comes to us, and salvation is wrought through us for his purpose and for his plan in the moment and for longer term. So, folks, um, let's follow the example of Moses' mom. We don't know her name, doesn't mention her name here, but let's be people of faith. Let's follow the example. Let's be a part of God's plan. Let's experience, let's have impact, not only now, but throughout all eternity. And let people know, when we, when we hear those words by God, um, when we enter into heaven, it says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into our rest that is prepared for you. Amen. I want to be, I want to hear those words, but it requires faith. And follow the wonderful examples of faith that we see um, in scripture, in, in this particular circumstance with Moses and his mom. Amen. Um, let's take some, if, if there's some of us out there that don't, don't know him, but they, you're a little afraid. You don't understand. You see the circumstances going on around you and you don't really know, um, you don't know what to do. And, um, but the first step sometimes is, is that you need to take that leap of faith as we're, as we're so to speak. And that, Faith and uh, uh, putting your trust in Him. That's the first step. It's taking that time, taking that moment to put your faith in Him, saying, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've hurt you. I've hurt you. I've missed the mark. And I, I want to ask your forgiveness and I want to seek your mercy, Jesus. Please forgive me. I know I messed up. I know I've really hurt you badly. I've hurt others badly. Jesus, please forgive me and show me mercy. And Jesus, please come inside my life and take control of my life. Please come inside and take control and be my master and my savior. Let's take a moment and do that. And then I'm going to pray a prayer for us uh, for those who do know the Lord. And if you would pray that with me as well, um, that would be great. Let us pray. Jesus, I'm a little afraid, Jesus, some Sometimes I don't know. I see the circumstances around me. But Jesus, please um, forgive me of my sin. Show me mercy for the things I've done. I know that you died on the cross and you shed your blood for me. I received that by faith. And I understand that you did it because you love me. Jesus, please forgive me. Please come inside my life and take control of my life live inside of me and dwell inside of me. Um, help me to 
live for you, and to love you, and to walk with you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior, even today. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus, for those, um, I, I, we love you, Jesus, and those of us who do know you, Jesus, we pray, um, Jesus, uh, I'm sorry as well if I haven't lived for you. Please forgive me and please show me mercy. Um, uh, and help me just to live, continue to, help me just to live for you, Jesus. Um, please just renew my faith. Help me take that leap of faith and just walk with you again and uh, walk in your presence again, Jesus. Um, and to be obedient to you and just not be afraid to act in faith, not be afraid to take those steps that I need to take. But I commit myself and I commit my life. I rededicate my life to you, O oh God, even right now. Thank you, Jesus. And I receive you, uh, I receive your favor and your blessing um, once again in my life. Thank you, Jesus. And let's just pray. Pray the pray this prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory both now and forever. Amen. If you pray, if you, if you prayed those prayers, believe the Lord for what he did in you. That he saved you that he's given you new life. He's forgiven you and washed you of your sins. And if you rededicate your life, believe him that he's forgiven you again and that he's, um, he's for you. He says, um, God is for us, who shall be against us. In Romans chapter 28. God forgives us. It says that he remembers our sin no more. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he casts our sins from us. So, East and West never meet. So God forgives us, and he uh, cleanses us, and he washes us, and shows us mercy. And so receive that and begin walking in faith once again. Amen. Uh, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. And may his peace and may his joy um, and his presence go with you all. Amen.